I'm off to Southwest Rocks to meet a team of commercial fish eyes who have been battling for change in their own industry. Southwest Rocks is just over 100 kilometres south of Coffs Harbour, or about an hour and a half drive. But before I burl down the highway, I want to put the new Toyota Prado three-door through its paces. So I find a little side road off the beaten track. This three-door Prado is fitted with a system called MTS, which stands for Multi-Terrain Select. And it allows you, as a driver, to select the terrain you're on. For example, where I am, I'm going to be on mud. And the car will tailor suit itself to that particular terrain. You can also see exactly what's going on around your vehicle. These yellow lines show where my wheels are pointing. And cameras help me see any obstructions in front, under the rear vision mirrors, or right at the back. The Prado also has traction control. Traction control relies on a certain amount of wheel slippage before it will divert power to the opposite wheel. For example, on a slippery slope like this, if I just touch the throttle slightly, my front left wheel now should be turning and my back right should be turning, but the two opposing aren't doing anything. That is, until I accelerate a little bit harder, in which case the traction control will kick in and it will divert power to the opposite wheel. This Prado has the bonus of a rear diff lock. If you select that, your two rear wheels will start turning immediately, so you don't have to wait for traction control to kick in. Well, time to swap the bush for the beach. This is Trial Bay Beach in Southwest Rocks. And believe it or not, this humble looking shack is headquarters for a quiet revolution. Ocean Watch scientist Michael Wooden has been working with the local beach hole fishermen to help them change the way they harvest their fish. Well, we've got a spotter up the beach at the moment and he's um, looking for some ground fish travelling at the moment. So um, when Vince um, spots something, then hopefully we can get down there and catch some. These blokes have been fishing these waters for decades, some of them for five generations, targeting brim, blackfish and tarwin. Their technique is pretty straightforward. A spotter seeks out the fish schools, then calls back to the team yeah, further down the beach. Yeah, I've got a bit of a shade just showing up now, mate. This gives the fishers time to grab their gear, get out in their rowboats, and net the fish as they swarm past. Trouble is, along with all the legal fish, their nets were snaring unwanted species and undersized fish. We were catching, catching quite, a, quite a few, and it was a real pain in the neck to sort them out. If we wanted to sort them out successfully before, we basically had to anchor a boat out in the water, side on with two anchors, hook the end of the bag over the Rolex, get out into the water up to our necks, flick the legal ones into the boat and the undersized ones into the water. And that was the only way we could really successfully save them. And that took us a lot of hours to do. So the commercial fish eyes took matters into their own hands. With the help of the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation, they called for scientific backup. Yeah, there's a bit of small stuff through them, but mainly good stuff. Michael and Ocean Watch Australia came on board to help the beach hole boys create a better net. The traditional net had small mesh, making it impossible for juvenile brim and tarwin to swim through it. And the solution was simple. Make the mesh bigger so that the smaller brim could escape. We measured the, the maximum girth of the fish and that determined the, the actual mesh size which would reduce the capture of the juveniles. The girth of the brim was roughly uh, 102 millimetres at, at legal size. So we, we decided to, to trial that mesh size as, as a first point. Almost double the size of the, of the original so, uh, size net. Trials here at Trial Bay have been a huge success. They've reduced the bycatch of juvenile fish and non-target species by almost 80%. What's most impressive is that this determined band of fishers led the charge for change. Their crusade has convinced the New South Wales government to create new legislation to allow the larger mesh size. We're really pleased to see government agencies with the uh, FRDC and the Commonwealth Fisheries uh, and New South Wales Fisheries coming together to change legislation to enable fishermen to implement what we worked out over the years to basically create a better mousetrap to continually refine our gear uh, to make it so that we're having as minimal impact on the environment as possible. The new style nets will help boost juvenile brim population and that's great news for both commercial and recreational fishermen and also for the health of this magnificent waterway.